Welcome to the T-Bird Zone, shown every week on SUTBirds.com and SUUNews.com. We're in studio today with head football coach Ed Lamb, talking about a preview of the upcoming game with Sacramento State. And, coach, the kind of the buzz this week, Sacramento State gets an overtime victory over Oregon State um, in Corvallis last weekend. Oddly similar 29-28. To, to our game, where Sacramento State goes for two. They get their two-point conversion. Statistically, Oregon State wins that football game. More total yards, um, more turnovers. Uh, what have you seen in film? What was really the, the key for Sacramento State winning that game? And maybe is that a concern for the, the upcoming game this Saturday? Sacramento State finished drives, and, and that's always that's not a stat you would hear much about. But mm. but any time that us as coaches we look at total yards and first downs and and turnovers and all those things, and if those don't match up, then you, the next thing you would look at would be did we finish drives or not? And a lot of people just call that red zone. And, and Sacramento State actually scored a couple of long ones outside of the red zone. But the key was uh, Sacramento State's yards; none of their yards were burned. Oregon State turned the ball over a few times after long drives, and so if, if that's a 70, 80 yard drive, that's that's 70, 80 off the final stats. As you, if you're trying to, to compare final stats and determine who won anyway, you would just have to subtract those from the total stats. Um, was it Sacramento State's play of their quarterback? So you talked about some of the bigger plays that they had. Um, was it the play of their backfield, the play of their quarterback and receivers that led to those big plays? Sacramento State has great skill players on offense. They had um, their their quarterback, their running back, their receivers. Um, if, if you had an opportunity as a general manager to, to trade Sacramento State's players for Oregon State's skill players on offense, there's no question Sacramento State's players are clearly better. Um, what is then the key matchup going into our game with Sacramento State, the home opener this Saturday, 1 o'clock at Echoes Coliseum? What's the key matchup then for this game? Uh, we've got to take care of uh, assignments um, and, and execution on, on offense. Penalties hurt us a week ago. I think our offense is very well aware of that. We need to stay on schedule and, and allow our toughness, our conditioning, our strength, our players to make plays. But it's hard when it's first and 15 or second and long, and we had a lot of those situations. On defense, we need to take care of our secondary rotations. Um, that Sacramento State does like trick plays. They like to go deep, and, and so we need to be able to get aggressive and support from the secondary, but also take care of, of uh, the play action pass and things with, with other secondary players that should be guarding deep. And so that'll be really important, our technique in the secondary as well. Is Sacramento State a team that's more of a run first to set up that play action pass, or is it just a trick play when it lends itself? Well, they have, they have a good scheme. They have a good offensive running scheme, and they believe in it, and they, and they do well with it. They have a quarterback that's capable of running as well, and, um, and they'll throw out all the stops, I'm sure, in this game, and they'll be willing to, to risk their quarterback as a runner. Um, they have a great uh, tailback. I think it was first or second team, all big sky a year ago returning, and, and a whole, like, as I said, a whole bunch of great receivers. So they will, they'll mix it up. I think, um, I think their team is a lot like ours, where they have a lot of confidence in their ability to throw the ball, and in any team who has an accurate thrower and capable receivers, um, you know, they're, they're, at any time they're going to turn into a throwing offense if they're threatened at all. Um, we talked about last week how it may be a grinded out type game at South Dakota State. This game is sounding more like it may be arena football with a whole mm -hmm. lot of throwing and not a whole lot of running. Do you, do you anticipate a high scoring game potentially this weekend? Well, I, I, it's not what I anticipate because I think in terms of, of our defense and, and offense and so and our special teams. So usually when you talk about a high-scoring game, you talk about a lot of defensive errors. And, uh, and we don't have any expectation that their defense is going to make errors and allow us to, to throw 50-plus on the board. And, and, and I have no expectation that our defense is going to fail us in that way. So I expect a hard-fought battle and, and more of a typical score. Uh, I hope even a, even a lower scoring game than a week ago where there were a lot of opening game mistakes. Ending up in a two scores very near the 30s is uncharacteristic for us. How does this playing at home now, the home opener, is that a calming influence for the players rather than needing to open on the road? I, I, I don't know. I, I suppose every player um, approaches it differently, but just to speculate because you asked the question, I think that, that some of our players would be more comfortable and, and calm, if you will, and I think that other, others of our players that really feed off of passion and energy and play the game in that way 
are going to feel um, at home a little bit more like um, you know, like this is this is our this is our territory and it's important to win our home games. That's one of our goals going into every season is to win our home games and and so I think the the level of importance, the level of intensity that we attack the game with, I think is definitely impacted by the fact that we're at home. Now there's been big sky opponents on the schedule before with the upcoming transition into the big sky. Is there any extra buzz among the players um, just to say, hey, you know what, we're going to come in the big sky and we're going to, you know, send a message? I, I hope not. There, our total focus is on winning the Great West Conference Championship and, and sending our seniors out with the season they deserve. And, and our seniors will never play in a big sky conference game. So I think, um, I think if some of our young players are looking ahead and looking to send a message, then certainly some extra motivation I don't think can hurt unless it becomes the major focus. And if we go out with a rallying cry of, hey, let's prove ourselves to the big sky, then we're going to find that we're not playing the big sky. We're playing Sacramento State, and they're, they warrant our full attention. Very good. Um, how, how do the fans affect play on the field? Is there, the louder the fans are, obviously when you're on the road, there's that noise factor that I, I don't know if that translated into offensive miscues penalty wise. Yeah. Um, but how can the home crowd really interject themselves in the game? Well, if the home crowd decides, uh, makes a decision together to work as a group and, and make noise, for example, on third down when the opponent's offense is on third down, um, then, then it, makes, it makes the opponent's offense more one-dimensional. It's very hard to get an audible call off as an offense when there's a lot of noise going on. And it's also very hard to get the snap off. So you'll have offensive linemen for the opponent getting off the snap count late. Our defensive line will get a jump. There's also um, a lot of false starts because it's hard to hear the quarterback in that situation on the snap count. So. We are, we are hoping for a big crowd. I think uh, if, the, if the home crowd, the home community will stay with us, even though we lo dropped our opening game, I know they'll see a, f a fun, exciting product this Saturday. Very good. Military Appreciation Day on Saturday. Again, that game kickoff is at 1 p.m. at Eccles Coliseum. Coach, we appreciate you being here in the T-Bird Zone. Again, streamed every week on suutbirds.com and suunews.com. We'll see you next week.